In most areas of the world outside Africa where there's malaria, it's made up of two species, Plasmodium falciparum and Plasmodium vivax. And differentiating between the two uh, at the clinic level where the, when a patient has fever has always been a bit of a challenge. It's important because the uh, two species require different treatments. Um, so we conducted a uh, study in the primary healthcare system of Afghanistan um, amongst ordinary patients who had a fever where the clinician, the doctor, may have suspected that it was malaria. We know quite a lot about the uh, impact of improving diagnostics for malaria in Africa, but so far very few studies have been conducted in Asia. And this is a part of the world which has about two, two and a half billion people at risk of malaria. So it's really a major public health issue. There are many millions of cases, although the prevalence is not as high as Africa and there are far fewer deaths, it is still a significant public health problem. So we conducted similar trials to those that have been done in Africa, but in an Asian context where the two species of malaria, Plasmodium falciparum and Plasmodium vivax, coincide. So we conducted a randomized control trial in uh, 22 primary health level clinics in Afghanistan. Um, one was in a, an area in the east of Afghanistan where malaria transmission is, is moderate to high, and one was in the north of Afghanistan where malaria transmission is low. The 22 clinics uh, were staffed by around 80 clinicians who provided diagnosis and treatment for malaria. And um, we had uh, patients coming with a fever to the clinic were enrolled in the study. They were randomized to either a diagnosis with uh, the diagnostic facility that was available in the clinic at the time, and there are two different types. One is microscopy, which is the classic and most frequently used diagnostic method for malaria in most of the world. And the other was clinical signs and symptoms, where there is no diagnostic facility other than the clinician's uh, opinion, uh, listening to the patient's um, symptoms and signs. So we introduced then uh, malaria rapid diagnostic tests into those clinics. And I've got one here. Um, they're fairly simple to use. They're relatively cheap. Um, and they are, are considered to be uh, rather very accurate. So patients with a fever were uh, randomized to be diagnosed either with one of these, a rapid diagnostic test, or with the currently existing uh, method of, of diagnosis. And then we measured um, the proportion of patients who were appropriately treated. And that we defined as patients who had a positive uh, malaria test, uh, a reference malaria test, uh, being given the appropriate antimalarial drug, and those with no malaria being uh, given no antimalarial drug. And we confirmed the patient's disease state by using um, uh, expert microscopists backed up with a molecular technique called PCR to give us a definitive diagnosis of whether the patient had malaria or no malaria, and furthermore, which type of malaria they had. So there were three main findings of the study. Um, we found that in the uh, cl where clinical diagnosis is based on signs and symptoms, patients are very frequently over-treated with anti-malarial drugs. That means that they don't really have malaria, uh, but they're given an anti-malarial drug because their symptoms resemble malaria. And this is particularly a problem in the very low transmission area in the north of Afghanistan. And by our measure, only about 12% of those patients were treated appropriately when clinical diagnosis was used. And most of those who were inappropriately treated were patients with no malaria who were given anti-malarial drugs. The rapid diagnostic test uh, improved this quite significantly um, and about 65% of the patients were appropriately treated. That's to say that it improved the number of uh, malaria negative patients who did not receive antimalarial drugs. In the second transmission area where um, we had uh, moderate transmission, there was um, a modest difference between those diagnosed with rapid diagnostic tests and uh, microscopy. Um, and so that difference was um, modest but still statistically significant. But we found that most of those patients who were inappropriately treated uh, were patients with a negative test result who, who received an antimalarial drug. The second major finding was that the um, uh, rapid diagnostic tests appeared much more effective at detecting the rarer cases of the more fatal form of malaria, Plasmodium falciparum, and that resulted in a much higher treatment 
uh, accuracy with the recommended first line therapy, which is called artemisinin in combination therapy. The second uh, malaria species that exists there doesn't require the more expensive ACT for treatment, but the falciparum, which could potentially be, be fatal, um, it's really imperative that those cases are adequately detected, and it seemed that the rapid diagnostic test was much more accurate than microscopy in an operational setting uh, at detecting those falciparum cases and providing treatment. And the third main finding was that the uh, rapid diagnostic test, uh, when it was compared to microscopy, didn't change the um, practice of uh, over-prescribing anti-malarial drugs in those with a negative test result. So about 20% of patients who had a negative rapid diagnostic test result or microscopy result still continued to receive anti-malarial drugs. And this represents uh, um, uh, both wastage of drugs, but also an inappropriate treatment given to, given to a patient who could benefit from perhaps a different course of treatment. So in South and Central Asia, there are, are probably uh, about 2 billion people at risk of malaria. And the current norm is that they don't receive a, a, a parasite-based test, i.e. a rapid diagnostic test or a, or a micro microscopic diagnosis of their disease. So the World Health Organization is uh, concentrating very much now on, on the process of expanding access to parasite-based diagnosis for malaria. So we hope that this research will provide uh, really insights into the operational um, aspects and the um, uh, impact that these uh, tools might, might have in other regions. The clinics where we conducted the research are um, you know, fairly typical primary healthcare clinics of, of most you know, um, low-income areas of, of South Asia. So we think the findings are probably generalizable. But we would recommend that um, where rapid diagnostic tests are introduced, they're done with uh, significant piloting and uh, probably a, a series of evaluations to check that they, they're doing what we hope they will do, which is improve the intended treatment that's given to malaria patients and, importantly, to patients who don't have malaria but may have other diseases.